Hello and welcome back to the Push for Bitwig script tutorial. And today I like to start with a little addendum to the last show where we talked about playing the push and using the sequences. And then we want to dive into what you can do to tracks, monitoring and also the session view. Okay, let's start with an addendum to the last show. What I forgot to tell you. If you play a note, you have the pads have full velocity. So if you don't want to have velocity, for example, you want to play a drum track with a fixed velocity or a groove with a fixed velocity, you can press the accent button here. And then every, no matter how hard you play, it will always have the same volume and you can adjust that volume. So if you keep the accent button pressed, you will see the velocity value, which is used. So this is maximum now 127. Let's try a lower one. Then we have 91 and you can have it back again. So nice little feature, which could help in some situations. Next thing is to talk about velocity. If you don't like uh, the setting, how the velocity feels on the pads, there's also a way to adjust them. Keep the user button pressed and you get into a hidden menu where you can adjust the threshold of your pad, how quickly it sounds, and also you can adjust the velocity curve used on your pads. And if you don't want to set them each time, you can also store them. So if you're going to preferences and you see at the bottom, there is pad sensitivity and you can select your preferred one. And this is then even stored uh, if you create new projects or close Bitwig down and restart it. Same for the fixed accent value. You can turn it on and off and the value is also stored here. What I showed in the last part of the tutorial, how to use a ribbon controller. Also here, your preferred settings are stored. If you like to have a combination or your CC, this is also remembered automatically. You don't have to set them here. If you set it directly at the controller, this is adjusted here and is always remembered. Also, what I showed in the last show is the scales. Also your preferred scales, space node. Uh, if you like chromatic mode and your layout is also stored with Bitwig. Um, what is missing here is workflow return to zero was in the first part and what is behind VU meters and display crossfaders on track. I will also explain to you in this part of the series and remember these two for now. If we look at the controller, so far we looked at the left part, we looked at playing and we looked about changing um, uh, between nodes and session mode. And now I want to start with session mode where you see all your clips. You see the colors uh, you chose for your clips and you chose for your tracks. You also see if one is lit in red, it is ready for recording. Uh, let's turn it off. And if you press on a button, the clip starts playing. And if you click on an empty one, it stops playing. You can also stop it, stop one channel. If you press the stop button and click on a second row, then uh, this channel is, is stopped. And on the right, you have your scenes. So this uh, is one scene. If you click on a scene button, then this scene starts playing. And if you start an empty scene, that one is stopped. And a nice feature here is that you can flip the whole uh, scenery here. So if you press session again, the whole grid flips and is now in the same layout as when you use clips with your arrangement view. It's the same as what you see uh, on, on your computer screen. So this might come in handy. If you swap to the mixer view, then that one is the same you see uh, on a computer screen. And in flip mode, there's some differences here. You start now the scene with the second row buttons. Like this. 
And on the right hand, uh, you can only mute or solo. So in this mode, uh, if a uh, scene is playing here, you can mute here the channels or, again, or use the solo function so you can solo the drums. Solo off. The arrows uh, are for navigating through your grid, so you can scroll to the right, scroll to the left, up and down. The first row and the second row, if you don't have the flip used, are also the same when you're in note mode or when you're in session mode. So what you can do here is the first row is for selecting your track. Click one, this one, this track uh, gets selected and if it's a MIDI track, it also gets set to record. So that's why it lines red. If you don't want to record, you can press it again, then it's not recording. If you go to audio track, uh, you have to press again to enable it. Also with your arrow keys, you can change the track selection as well. And you can move in bigger steps. So if you press the shift button, you can jump through banks of eight. Yeah, you might wonder why this one turns off. So when you're in an audio channel, you can't play because it doesn't make much sense to play in an audio channel. And therefore the pads are not working here. Okay, what else? Uh, if we're in mute mode, so you can mute uh, this, the, the channels. So let's play again. So you can mute down everything, have the drums playing. Drums are also gone. And the same is for for switching to solo, then everything gets in a grayish style and the track you solo gets blue. You can also solo more than one track. This is also possible. And there's another hidden feature. If you press the select button, you will see this one changes to green. And now you can turn on and off auto monitoring. So auto monitoring is going off. Uh, no, the other way around. This is monitoring and this one is auto monitoring. If you press the select key. Coming to mixing your songs and, and tracks, if you look on the upper right hand, there are several buttons. You have volume, pan and send and track. These three are the important ones. So if you go to track, you get the view and the parameters of your currently selected track. So you have the volume, you have your panorama, you can select the state of the crossfader. So if it's on channel A or on channel B or centered, so playing on both, you can adjust your send level. So I have two send channels here, one reverb and delay, and you can adjust how much is sent here. And that was one of the options I showed you before in a properties dialog can select if you want to see crossfader here or not. If you turn it off, you get one more send channel. So if you don't use crossfader, you can turn it off and have the advantage to have one more uh, send channel available on that view. If you go to the volume mode, you see the, all the volumes of all the eight channels which are currently selected in that bank. And yeah, you can adjust the volume as well. And if you have something playing, you have the option to press the shift key and the track button and then you will get the VU meters playing. So you see on which track you have something going on. And this is also the setting you can have in a properties if you would have like it like VU meters or if you want to see the currently selected volume. And the last one is the panorama and send. So you can set the panorama for all of your tracks. And if you press it multiple times, you can also flip through the send channel. So we have the reverb you can adjust. And if you press it again, you have the second one and then back to panorama. So if you would have more send channels, they would also appear if you press it multiple times here. 
Another feature is if you are now in, in track mode, you only see the tracks which are audio tracks or uh, MIDI uh, or instrument tracks, but you don't see your effect tracks. If you press track again, you go into that other mode where you see all the effect tracks of your current song. These are now the same features. You can mute and solo them. Here's solo. You can set the volume, the pan, and also have a crossfader here. No sense because sense to sense would be not too helpful. You have also the other buttons then in it mode too. And the last feature to show is that you can add a new track if you press the add track button. Let's scroll down first so you see what's there. So if you do an add track, there will be a new instrument track created. And there's some button combinations. If you press the shift button and the add track, you will get a new effect track. And if you use the select and add track button, you will get a new audio track. And we are already again at the end of this part. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye and create some funky music.